Why would a competitive cyclist trade in their Lycra for some gym shorts? And why would they get off their bike to get under a squat rack? There's only one reason, and that's to get faster. It's that time of the year again, the off season, which means more and more cyclists are hitting the gym to increase their strength training. And here in the past few years, strength training has become quite popular among endurance athletes. But there's still one big question we have to ask ourselves, does it work? And the short answer is yes, and the long answer is keep watching. Like my boy MC Spandex once said, It's all about performance, that's the name of the game. I pump up my tires and I oil my chain. So we could ask the question, does strength training improve cycling performance? But I think we all know the answer to that question, undoubtedly. And if you don't, just listen to this list of improvements from one of the research articles comparing strength training among competitive cyclists. The intervention manifested significant improvements in one rep max of 14.2%, of rate of force development about 17%, cycling economy of almost 5%, work efficiency of almost 5%, and time to exhaustion at pre-intervention maximal aerobic power at over 17%. No changes were found in either O2 max or body weight. So rather than beating a dead horse and talking to you about why strength training actually does improve performance, I want to go a little bit more deeper and ask how does it improve cycling performance? And to this I have two main explanations. Studies have shown that strength training does in fact increase cycling performance, but it's an entirely separate topic to ask the question, how in the world does it work? And to this, I think the primary reason that hitting the gym can make you a better bike racer is because of the brain-body connection. The science word for this, you might say, is the neuromuscular connection. This study on max strength training in competitive cyclists phrases it this way. Although some hypertrophic responses is to be expected after maximal strength training, we suggest that the main responses to the maximal training are neural adaptations. So basically what they're saying is that, yeah, your muscles do get stronger, but even more so than that, your brain gets stronger. How cool is that? Every time we move our body, it's because a brain sent a message to that body part to move. When we move our leg, it's because our brain said, hey leg, move. So when we're on our bikes, our brain is sending thousands and thousands of messages to our legs to move little weight a bunch of times. Just pop, 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 move, 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 move. But when we hit the squat rack, our brain has to send these messages to our muscles to lift a lot of weight a few times. There's a big difference there. And hitting the gym increases or improves this communication between your brain and your muscles. It's kind of like your cell phone. Your cell phone gets better when it has a stronger cell signal. Likewise, our muscles work better when our brain can send better messages to those muscles. This study goes on to say that human muscle fatigue is not only dependent on peripheral factors at the muscle level, but also dependent on the central nervous system's ability to adequately drive motor neurons. So, if fewer motor units need to be recruited at the same time at a given intensity, a longer time to onset of muscle fatigue and thus a longer time to exhaustion at that specific intensity may be expected. Time to exhaustion at pre-test maximal aerobic power increased by 62 seconds or 17.2%. A 17% increase in time to exhaustion. That is significant. We cannot just brush over that number. That is massive. And what they're saying is that that's not because your muscles have gotten 17% stronger. It's because your brain has figured out a way to use your muscles 17% more effectively. It's kind of like you're on a construction site and there's a manager over the whole construction site. And when they first get on the job, he's trying to figure out who the hard workers are and who the, you know, who the slackers are. And after a little while, after a few weeks, he's figured out who the good guys are. And he's like, all right, you Joe and you Bill and you Bob, you three are the, you guys are strong. I'm going to start recruiting you. Get that? Recruiting. I'm going to start using you guys more and more. And we're just going to get more done. And at the end of the day, the manager is going to get more done on that construction site 
because he's effectively using what he has in front of him. That's kind of how the brain is using our muscles. It's getting better at using our muscles. One of the good things about cycling and strength training is that we get to show off our muscles more than any other athletes. I mean, we wear skin tight lycra all the time. So if you're hitting the gym, your buddies are gonna see those gym gains on the next group ride. And I'm excited to announce that this year I'm gonna be partnering with Starlight Apparel and the Black Bibs to be hooking me up with my skin tight lycra. There's a couple reasons why I'm excited about this partnership. First of all, they make good quality, affordable, gear right like you can you can spend hundreds of dollars on a nice set of bibs or you can spend 80 to 100 dollars on a nice set of bibs at theblackbibs.com i like working with smaller companies like starlight because i can get to know the owner and they can get to know me and i'm not just a another athlete on a spreadsheet and on top of that my cycling kit is going to be lit this year i mean like literally it's going to be fire so if you want to get your hands on a custom kit, ignition kit that I'll be racing in this year, there's two different versions. You can purchase those all the way up until I think January 31st. I may extend that. So don't wait. Get your hands on a custom ignition kit. A portion of the proceeds will go back to me to help me keep developing my cycling career, get to and from all the races this year. So for those of you who are, who are going to purchase a kit, you're going to look good. I promise you that. And I also say thank you. For supporting. Our bodies are compromised of three primary types of muscle fibers. You've got your type 1, your type 2A, and your type 2B. And all three of these are responsible for producing energy at certain intensity levels. Your type 1 are more slow twitch energy production, and your type 2 muscles are more fast twitch energy production. This article that talks about muscles and fiber types has this really interesting chart that shows the distribution of muscle fiber types among different types of athletes. As you'll notice, the extreme endurance athlete on the far right of the chart is almost primarily slow type 1 muscle fibers. Whereas on the flip side, you've got a world-class sprinter who is almost primarily fast twitch muscles. And this begs the question, do I develop these muscle fiber types or am I born with these muscle fiber types? And the research is a little unclear. This article writes that many experiments performed over the past couple of decades found no evidence that slow fibers can be converted to fast and vice versa. So if you're trying to convert your fast twitch muscles to slow twitch muscles, it seems like the research says that's not possible. But there is some good news to this. Listen to this. In fact, when healthy muscles are loaded heavily and repeatedly, as in weight training program, the number of fast 2X fibers declines as they convert to fast 2A fibers. So if you're looking for endurance, you can't just switch your fast twitch muscles into slow twitch muscle fibers, but you can convert your fast twitch muscle fibers into less fast twitch muscle fibers, which in the grand scheme of things is a little bit of a good thing for endurance athletes. David Epstein commenting on this article in his book, The Sports Gene writes that aerobic training can make fast twitch fibers more enduring and strength training can make slow twitch fibers stronger, but they don't completely flip. And this strengthening and converting of muscle fibers is one of the primary reasons why strength training actually works for cyclists. Listen to this review give an explanation of this. The primary explanation for improved endurance performance is most likely adaptations within the strength trained muscle, including postponed activation of less efficient type 2 fibers, improved neuromuscular efficiency, remember number one, neuromuscular, conversion of fast twitch type 2X fibers into more fatigue resistant type 2A fibers, and improved musculotendinous stiffness. Importantly, no negative effects of adding strength training to an endurance training program have been reported. And the reason that this works has something to do with our slow twitch muscles. Here's what they say. It might be suggested that the strength training increases the maximum strength of type 1 fibers and postpones their time to exhaustion and thereby delaying the activation of type 2 fibers. So here's the thing, your fast twitch muscle uses a ton of energy. It's super inefficient. We don't want to use those muscles 
when we're doing an endurance sport, unless you're sprinting. So it's unfortunate that we can't totally convert those fast twitch fibers into slow twitch fibers, but it does completely make sense that our type one muscle fibers can actually be made stronger, therefore preventing us from using those less efficient type two fast twitch muscle fibers during a race. And this totally makes sense when you look at that massive increase in time to exhaustion in those previous studies. So it's pretty clear that strength training does in fact improve cycling performance. And hopefully after watching this video, you won't just mindlessly believe that, you'll know that it's legit. Like it's not just hocus pocus. The science is there if you wanna say. But you might be asking yourself, well, how do I do it, Drew? And to that I respond, watch my next video because I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I coordinate strength training with cycling training with the athletes that I coach. If you've made it this far into the video, then you must be a super fan and I thank you for that. And if you want to support my video creating abilities, there are a bunch of things that you can do in the description below, including hiring a coach through Ignition Coach Co, dropping a tip jar over at Patreon, or just buying stuff through all of the different sponsors that I have. All of those things are all linked below. I've got discount codes, I've got referral codes, I've got affiliate links, all that stuff. You, if you need a bike rack, if you need some flow formulas, if you need more bike tools, all that stuff in the description below. Thanks for watching, see you out there.